Days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. With these eyes, I'm looking right at you, right at you. You give me something to believe in, just what I need in. You're the closest. This election cycle, probably the last three, have created and fomented, maybe since 2008, has uh, shown the fissures in this country. Is is it racial or is there something else going on? Exhibit A, a neighbor, and I don't know if we have the TikTok. Did I, did I put the TikTok of the neighbor? Did I send you that of the neighbor whose neighbor, who's, uh, neighbor asked her to take down her Harris? I sent it. Okay. I'm going to play this clip. And you listen for yourself. So it should come as no surprise to you that I am a Harris Wells supporter. And I was so excited to get my yard sign in the mail. I had purchased it before she had been officially recognized as the nominee at the DNC. And then it finally came and I was so excited and I put it in the yard. Well, my husband came up to me yesterday and said that our neighbor has asked if we could remove the sign for the weekend. Our neighbors are moving and they're selling their house and essentially he insinuated that by having the Harris Falls yard sign that he was concerned his house would not sell or sell for as much as it could. My initial reaction to this was like, absolutely not. Like my political beliefs, the signage that I have on my property have nothing to do with whether or not your house is going to sell or for how much it's going to sell. It's about the quality of your home, the price you have it listed at, the location that it is. And like, you need to sell it quickly, I understand, because they've already purchased another house, but that's like not my problem. And also like, it could actually benefit you, who knows? Either way, I said no. My husband has now like revisited this with me because he admittedly was like, I have no spine when it comes to this. He doesn't agree with our neighbor, but he also is taking into account like our kids are friendly with their kids and they often play together. They're right next door. His wife and I are, are very friendly. She's a lovely human being. So, so sweet. I've never really gotten along with him because we have gotten into heated conversations about different political beliefs before, but I still keep it cordial, but I feel like it's not actually neighborly to even ask me to take the sign down, but I'm putting it to you. What would you do in this situation? Do you take it down for the weekend and be offer a neighborly gesture or do you say absolutely not dude? Like, no, you should never have asked me that. And you're just going to have to deal with it. So I pose the question to you. Do you take down the sign? 866-801-8255. Do you put up a, how many of you actually have lawn signs? Do you have lawn signs? Do you have lawn signs? Do you wave a flag of any kind? Do you, what kind of bumper stickers? I'm asking a question. And the larger question is why? Why is this necessary? Is this necessary? Should she take it down? Should she keep it up? Love to hear from you. I have opinions. I have many opinions. I have opinions. I'll tell you my opinions. I want to hear from you guys first. 866-801-8255. So, you know, um, I spend some time watching television. It's one of the things I do, which is why on Fridays I tell y'all what I'm watching. And one of the TV shows that I'm watching is on HBO. I watch it on Max because I pay for Max. So I'm watching on the damn 5011 streaming um, services that I have that cost me more than cable. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. We live in an upside down world. We really do. We need to address this at some point. But I'm watching a show called Industry. For the young people out there, think Euphoria, which I've never watched, but I imagine Euphoria meets Secession, meets Billions. It's one of those shows that takes a peek into an industry. In this case, it's the financial industry and all of the inner workings of one particular financial um uh, what, what do they call these? One of these houses that manage money and they do all of this, you know, these tradings and, and all of this. And it's based in London. Now they have a, you know, they have an American um, office, head office as well. But it's we're, we're watching through the lens of this company run in um, Great Britain. OK, so on season three, episode five of Industry, which I watch on Max, 
There's this scandal around an IPO, a new energy company called Lumi, headed by a guy who looks uh, like Jon Snow. Actually, it's the guy that played Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. So he looks very familiar. And he's supposed to be this, you know, this nuts and berries type of, you know, love the environment type of guy who started this company. He's supposed to be this great human being. But something happens. The company um, uh, uh, apparently was inflated. The price and everything that they did is something like what we were talking about last week with all of these companies that are from Theranos to um, Fit, what's the uh, the Sam Bankman Freed's company? There's like all of these companies. They go public. They get all of this VC money. They get all this VC money. Well, those companies, uh, fin, uh, the one with Sam Bankman Freed, did go public. I don't think Theranos ever did. But you know, you you, you see it's all of this energy, all this excitement around it, and then somehow the government got involved. You know, because they were touting it because the the British government is trying to do clean energy, all this other stuff, right? And meanwhile, there's the brokerage house that is also, you know, because they're shorting and they're not shorting, they're actually pushing pushing the price up for the market, and you're getting to see all of the inner workings, right? In this particular episode, the, the thing crashes, right? Previous episode, we see the whole company crashes. It's it's inflated, and, and the people are mad. The government has to come in and bail them out. And meanwhile, the company, the 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 monetary, the the brokerage firm is also like in bed, literally and figuratively, with the CEO. Which you know, it's it's a weird entanglement, and he's sleeping with somebody in the company. The guy they put one of their guys to to take the fall. So there's a hearing. There's a hearing. The regulatory folk are like, what happened here? The oversight committee wants to know what happened. So the government comes and and, and so they were going to pin it all on this one guy within the brokerage firm who had absolutely nothing to do with it. But they needed a fall guy. And the the um, the head, the, the heads in the room were like, well, he's young. You know, he has a career ahead of him. He'll be OK. But this kid is like, I'm about to lose my job, my reputation, everything. I didn't have anything to do. They gave him a statement, put him on, put some fake glasses on him to, you know, gave him a whole thing to 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 say. If they say this, prepped him, and he got in the room and realized, like, I'm about to lose everything. The CEO is in on it. He shows up. It's like nothing to worry about, guy. Don't you worry. We got your back. Threw him under the bus, and then here comes the government. The government is like, it's our responsibility. We dropped the ball. Let's everybody off the hook. So you fast forward, they're celebrating because the brokerage firm's like, whew, we dodged that bullet. The CEO's like, whew. Meanwhile, by the way, before his company crashed, he cashed out. He cashed out billions of dollars, right? So you're like, this guy's supposed to be a good guy, but he cashed out. He knew it was about to fall insider trading. You know what's going on. People go to jail for that, don't they? Martha Stewart and them? Nope. And then in walks the secretary, the lady that bailed out the company in this room where they're clicking champagne. The the CEO's like uncle is the head of the major newspaper. They're all they're all celebrating the kid that was gonna go under the bus and celebrating. And in walks the lady that made everything good for the government and she resigned. And they're like, here's our next prime minister. And you're like, wait, what? Wait, oh y'all, y'all all set this up? Y'all all in on it? And so the newspaper guy's like, um, this is the headline we're playing with. What do you think? And he says this to the woman. And she happens, she's a black woman, but that's irrelevant, actually, because I, I realize that it doesn't matter what the complexion of the person is. There's a bigger game going on. So he says to her, what do you think about the headline? She said, it doesn't matter. This is your area. Make it whatever. And she's like, and the little the guy that was about to go, you know, the, the young man was like, what the hell? This was all orchestrated. So I feel like, let me just say this, the vast majority of us, regular ass people, there's a whole other game going on. In this country, for example, we have Congress people who literally insider trade. They pass legislation that they know they're about to pass, then they go to the stock market and they benefit from that The thing that they're about to do that they know because they're in these committees and they're talking to each other, it's legal for them to insider trade. Things that sent Martha Stewart to jail and a host of other people, they don't go to jail for. Why is that? 
Why is that? Why can lobbyists go to Washington and get things? When I hear people talk about tangibles, I'm having a larger conversation today. So 866-801-8255, join me. I already posed some questions. We're going to take your calls the first hour. I'm going to be doing this more. But I'm like, there are things going on in this world while we're arguing over tangibles, while we're arguing over who's black, who's not like us. Kendrick Lamar is doing a halftime. We're going to talk about that. Oh, my God, they just, those white men are killing us. That's a real thing, so we should stay on that. But there's a lot of things that we shouldn't be talking about, the Braxtons and all. But we are, we are engaged in this daily, and we're fighting each other, British actors who come here versus the, why are these jobs given to black people? We're having these conversations. Meanwhile, Congress is insider trading. Lobbyists go to Congress with a bag full of money. They give money to Congress. They give money to the Supreme Court. They give them trips. Laws change as a result because the Supreme Court said corporations are people, but the real people, we're the people. We don't have a say. We're watching it. We're fighting over Dems and Republicans, Democrats and Republicans, and progressives and Bernie Sanders and Joe Stein, and we're having these conversations. Meanwhile, they're having these room deals <laughs> that we don't know about. Here's what I need you to know. Oh, my goodness. So each year in May, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, the Bilderberg Conference is held at different locations each year. This year, we didn't even talk about it. I forgot it was going on. May, it happened in May, early May in Madrid, Spain, at the Eurostar Suites, which must be really nice, <laughs> at the uh, uh, Mira Sierra Hotel, right? The Eurostar Suites, Mira Sierra Hotel in Madrid, Spain. They had the Bilderberg meeting, the conference. Uh, it was the 70th edition, 7-0 edition of the event. 131 participants from 25 countries. I believe Stacey Abrams was invited to this one. Yes, I saw that somewhere. Even though everybody sworn to secrecy, you're not supposed to tell. That's one of the rules. I read it. I read up on it. It was established back in 1954 by... Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, Prince Bern Bernhard, excuse me, Bernhard, mm, he burns hard, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. The Bilderberg conferences or meetings are an annual private gathering of the European and North American political and business elite. Events are attended by between 120 and 150 people each year, invited by the Bilderberg's group steering committee, including prominent politicians, CEOs, national security experts, academics, journalists. This year they were talking about AI and cybersecurity and all kinds of things, uh, supposedly, because it's all secret, right? And so, but I, I have this question. So several, uh, you know, in the past, Clinton, both Obamas have been there allegedly, because we don't know. The conferences operate under uh, Chatham House rules, meaning that participants are sworn to secrecy, secrecy and cannot disclose the identity or infiltration, excuse me, I said that on purpose, affiliation of any particular speaker. So we only kind of know. We don't know, no, unless somebody violated. Uh, there are no press conferences during this event. It's customary. So then I was like doing a little search. Who is this uh, Prince Bernhard who started this? Bernhard of the Netherlands. Well, he was an early member of the Nazi party. He joined when it was just, you know, Hitler and a few people in a room. In one of them rooms, clinking champagne glasses and deciding what to do with the final solution and such and this and that. He was in those rooms. Early member. He's denied it. He's denied it, but they got they got the receipts. He served as an officer in the uh, Schutzen, excuse me, um, the Schutz, Schutzstaffel, the Schutzstaffel, which is the SS. He served as an officer in the SS. Uh, he switched his political allegiance <laughs> when, when, uh, when his country was invaded by the Nazis, because you know the leopard's going to bite, eat your face at some point. The leopard will eat your face. It's just ask, you know, the lady who had the monkey. And a friend came over and the monkey ripped off the lady's face. It's going to happen <laughs> eventually when you are in bed with an animal. It will be an animal. It will show its ass in your face. So I was like, hmm, how does uh, a, a, a thing started by somebody that was a member of the SS, one of the early adopters to Nazism, have this conference? Ever? And, what are they, and if you're black in a room like that, 
are you black in a room like that? Are you black in a room like that? I'm, I have questions. I have questions. So these are the things that I think about when I watch shows like this. This is why I watch a lot of, I read a lot of fiction, nonfiction, and I watch television because I'm gleaning. I'm like pulling little things and I'm like, somebody knows something. And they put it out and, you know, we, we usually lean in on a debauchery, you know, the drug use and the sex, when the real story's right there in your face. So here we are in America where we are running headlong into an election cycle where we're asked to pick a candidate who's going to lead us in the world. Do you think Trump was ever invited to Bilderberg at any point? Do you think he's part of this? Do you think he's in those rooms? Just ask him because it's, you know, just ask him. 866-801-TALK. I'm sure Kamala Harris will be invited. But our responsibility, you know, so as we talk about these corporations, a lot of us have this kind of learned helplessness where we're like, oh, well, this is the way it's always been. And, you know, it's nothing. We can't fight City Hall. Have you heard that? Can't fight City Hall. And we got a lot in our mind with the man dancing in our heads you know about what we can and cannot do and oh well this is what they they always do it so let's hold our vote because you know they're they're just gonna do what they want to do and the this and the that and the this and the that and there's a lot of noise from people whose vocal cords should probably be dipped in a lot of beats b-e-e-t-s that actually paralyzes your vocal cords when you drink them drink the beet juice straight i think they should all have shots of beet juice because there's a lot of noise when the focus should be on us and our responsibility to one another and to ourselves to show up and elect people who we should ask, we're going to have a politician on what is your responsibility? Is it when, when you have somebody walk in a room with a bag of money, what will you do? Here are the things we want. You got two years to do them. You got four years to do them. You have six years to do them. I expect to see some legislation with your name on it. Not just you with your rolled up sleeves, sitting around posturing, fundraising, becoming richer than you ever imagined or you ever deserved, given your low intellect and capabilities and skill level, but the money. And then the question is, why are we allowing price gouging from supermarkets and banks and oil companies? Why are we allowing that? And why do we every year send people to Congress and don't expect or require anything. And when we get a stinking pile of crap from them, we send them back again, or we do the worst thing. We sit home because, you know, they're all the same, two wings of the same bird. But the bird changes. When you cook that, when you pluck them feathers and you cook that mother freaker, it tastes different when you come with your seasoning. That's required of us. My days are cooler. And I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you, right at you, you give me something to believe in. Just what I needed. You're the closest.